Hey guys, so today's video is going to be very important for those of you who have suffered with fatigue related symptoms for a long period of time. You might have spent a while in hospital, chronically ill at home, you might have been bed bound. Whatever's happened to you, today's video will be very important, so make sure you take it in. So let's move on to deconditioning because this is a really important topic when it comes to chronic illness and a phenomenon that occurs in people who have been chronically ill for an extended period of time or somebody who's been ill and they've been relatively sedentary and bed bound for a prolonged period of time. It's something that's really important to note the effects this could actually end up having. So the definition of deconditioning is the reversal of a previous conditioning of a behavior. And now in terms of considering deconditioning with the human body, we need to understand that certain reflexes and mechanisms have been conditioned throughout our entire childhood up to the age we are currently. So not only do we as individuals develop certain behaviors growing up throughout our childhood, and you know we are conditioned through our external environment, but actually internally our body is gradually being conditioned to be able to adapt efficiently and appropriately with the surrounding world as well. So when the body is put in a situation where it expels very little energy and becomes physically inactive for a duration of time, new normals are set in terms of physiological adaptations within the nervous system and also other bodily processes. But just before we get into that, let's look at one of the key roles of our nervous system and what it's really intended for. And it's to continually adapt us, the host, to changes in our external and internal environments both in the short and long term. So for example, changes in blood pressure or heart rate from an orthostatic challenge, which means standing upright, vasoconstriction or vasodilation, depending on temperature changes, appropriate blood distribution when a muscle or organ requires fewer oxygen, and dilation or constriction of pupils depending on light exposure. And of course, the healthier an individual's nervous system is, the more effortless these responses should be and the more well-timed they are and the more accurate they should be in response to that individual's environment. So now this is just one example of deconditioning. So have you ever spent a week or more at bed rest in a hospital bed or even just at home when suffering with some kind of ailment? Think about the period after you have overcome this situation. Maybe you leave your hospital bed and you're traveling to go home and get on about with your everyday life and you know day-to-day -day tasks and everything how much more difficult are those tasks to partake in than before when you were in that hospital bed this is really what deconditioning is it's that thing of putting a fit and healthy individual at bed rest for a prolonged period of time and then seeing just how fit and healthy they are following that period of time and what you'll notice with basically every single human on this planet is everyone will feel exhausted after maybe even just a single week of being at bed rest. And I personally have spent multiple weeks and months in hospital over the last decade or so. And one event that really stood out for me was when I was at university and I spent about five days in hospital. And it was funny how independent I was before going into hospital and you know how active I was. And then following that five days in hospital, I remember how much I struggled just to get out of the hospital bed to walk down to get a taxi to actually be discharged back home to where I was at the university. So that energy difference in a matter of just five days of being bed bound really had a drastic impact on me and I'm sure it has on plenty of you watching. So another example of deconditioning is if you're somebody who's ever partaken in a sporting team or any athletic event where you feel like you've had to build up your fitness over a period of time in order to compete with the other people that you might be around and then for one reason or another it could be the fact that you're unwell it could be the fact that you've had to go away on some sort of work trip it could be that you've gone on holiday but for some reason or another you take weeks away from that sporting event so in my case i used to play a lot of football but around the period of my late teens to early 20s i had a lot of problems around those years and if you take weeks off of this sporting event then what ends up happening when you suddenly come back to it? You feel groggy, you feel out of breath, you feel like you've got a lot of saliva building up in your mouth, you feel tired, you feel like almost you know, nauseous because you just feel so unfit compared to the rest of the people out there. 
Again, this is another example of deconditioning where the body has physiologically adapted to the environment it's been in the last few weeks and it's not really fit for that actual sporting event and to partake in that activity for the amount of time and the intensity that you're looking for. And then this is really important to note guys, space flight deconditioning. Now this is super relevant and I'll get onto why it's relevant in a minute. But one area that's been closely studied is the impact of space flight on the human body. And astronauts now have to wear specialized anti-gravity spacesuits because the impacts of a zero G environment can be absolutely devastating for their health, especially when they return back to Earth. And some of the factors include cardiovascular deconditioning, decrease in bone mass, decreased immune function, decreased energy metabolism, plasma fluid loss, and changes in electrolyte and hormonal levels and balance. And if you wanted to look into this topic a little bit closer for yourself, I suggest the two books, Circulatory Response to the Upright Posture, and also Vestibular Autonomic Regulation, which is one of my favorite books that I've ever read on the topic of health. And why this is really interesting to note, guys, is just the impact of this zero-G environment for these astronauts that have gone off into space for a prolonged period of time and the devastating effects on their body when they return back to Earth. And you can find out all about it in these books when it comes to looking into some of the data, the graphs, the tables, and even some pictures of the physical differences between a person when they go up to space and also a person when they return from space. But why is this important for us to know? Well, I said in the previous slide it was important, guys. And that is because bed rest and an extended period of physical activity can actually closely resemble the effects of space flight and a zero G environment. So that means that during extended periods of rest, our energy metabolism will decrease, our fluid volume will decrease, our cardiac reflexes will decrease, and our bone mass will also decrease. And all of these physiological effects could bring with them a variety of symptoms, including things like orthostatic intolerance, POTS, severe fatigue, delayed gastric emptying, constipation, increased risk of fractures, anxiety and withdrawal due to sodium loss and fluid volume reduction, and also an all-round reduced stress tolerance. So it's interesting, one thing I see all the time from people on the internet who suffer with a chronic illness is this idea of them wanting to take something to gain lots of energy, take a supplement, change their diet. But a lot of these people are failing to recognize that their chronic illness and their, you know, physical fitness and their physical state that has left them bed bound for a period of time just that situation is keeping them fatigued and keeping them at bed rest so it's this vicious circle of events that is adding to the pressures on that person's body and contributing to their severe fatigue and it's just trying to get around to the idea of how to actually approach it to gradually recondition your body out of that situation. So what can we do about this situation? Well, firstly, I suggest checking for the signs and symptoms of deconditioning. See a specialist, somebody who might end up pointing you in the right direction when it comes to physiotherapy and ways you can gradually recondition your body and your nervous system. Movement of any kind is going to help, and so too is cardiovascular reconditioning, although it's going to have to be very gradual. 1G plus gravitational exposure, weightlifting, weighted vests, gaining weight, all of these things are going to gradually recondition the cardiovascular system. And also functional neurologic rehab, which I advise you guys to check out the series I put on my channel, which includes various activities, otolithic activation, vestibular therapy, eye exercises, rotational therapy, and other brain-based activities. And finally, allow plenty of time and rest for recovery. 